Ancient bricks from Mesopotamia recorded changes in the Earth's magnetic field. Scientists have received a new tool to study and better understand the history of our planet. Iron oxide particles contained in bricks produced over 3,000 years ago in Mesopotamia have provided important data on changes in the Earth's magnetic field over time. This information can help make more accurate predictions about how the Earth's magnetic field will behave in the future. Using bricks produced in Mesopotamia over 3,000 years ago, scientists have developed a method that allows them to determine how our planet's magnetic field has changed and evolved over time. This, in turn, can help us make better predictions about its current and future behavior. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The Earth's magnetic field is a kind of shield surrounding the planet and protecting it from solar winds and cosmic radiation. Currently, the most popular and supported by the strongest evidence dynamo theory, magnetohydrodynamic dynamo theory, assumes that the magnetic field is generated by currents and rotating masses of molten iron located in the core of our planet. But the Earth's magnetic field is not static, it changes over time. These changes may be the result of external factors such as solar winds. They may also be dependent on changes occurring within the planet. Satellites provide new data on current changes in the Earth's magnetic field, but to capture its evolution in the long term. Other methods must be used. Changes in the magnetic field can be registered by various materials on the planet's surface. For example, in volcanic lava the magnetic field existing at a given moment is preserved. Minerals sensitive to magnetic fields align with the Earth's magnetic field and maintain this position. Scientists can use these rocks as a record of the magnetic field. A team of scientists led by archaeologist Matthew Howland from Wichita State University in the USA decided to examine Mesopotamian bricks. Scientists wanted to find out whether the magnetic field left any traces in the building material. Scientists examined 32 clay bricks from Mesopotamia. Each of them was marked with the name of the king who reigned at the time the brick was made, so they knew when the particular brick was made. They then carefully chipped a small piece off each brick and used a magnetometer to measure the alignment of the microscopic iron oxide grains embedded in them. This technique allowed him to extensively reconstruct the magnetic field over a period of approximately 2,000 years, from the 3rd to the 1st millennium BC. We often rely on dating methods such as radiocarbon dating to establish the chronology of ancient Mesopotamia, explains archaeologist Mark Alterweil of University College London. However, some of the most common cultural remains, such as bricks and pottery, usually cannot be easily dated because they do not contain organic material. This work now helps provide an important dating foundation that will allow others to benefit from absolute dating using archaeomagnetism, he adds. In the next step, the researchers compared their results with other magnetic field reconstructions obtained from archaeomagnetic studies. Thanks to this, it was possible to confirm the existence of a magnetic anomaly in what is now Iraq at that time. Researchers determined that the magnetic field in the years 1050 to 550 BC it was extremely strong. Moreover, 
The analysis revealed brief fluctuations during the reign of Nebuchadnezzar II between 604 and 562 BC, showing that the Earth's magnetic field can change quite significantly over short periods of time. Well-dated archaeological remains of the rich cultures of Mesopotamia, especially bricks inscribed with the names of specific kings, provide an unprecedented opportunity to study changes in field strength at high temporal resolution. Tracking changes that have occurred over several decades or even less, says Lisa Talks of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography in the USA. Research on the mysterious genomes of parasitic nematodes. Two species of related nematodes, which were previously considered identical, are separated by millions of years of independent evolution. Research with the participation of Professor Agnes Kerklock has shown. They were described in Nature Communications. Professor Agnes Kerklock from the Faculty of Biology at the University of Warsaw participated in a large project on the genomes of nematodes, invertebrates inhabiting water or soil, very often parasites of animals or plants. The result was the determination that two species of closely related nematodes which until then were considered almost identical and which were often listed in the professional literature as one species, were in fact separated by millions of years of evolution. Although they likely descended from a common ancestor, the current differences are the result of selective pressure exerted by the immune response of their hosts, mice and mice. Although for a long time these two species of nematodes were considered identical, our research has shown that they are separated by millions of years of independent evolution, says Professor Agnes Kerklock, quoted on the university website. Areas of very high variability were found in the genomes of both species, which encode genes that interact with the host's immune system. Some of them are very old. It arose before the separation of the two species of nematodes and has also been preserved in nematodes that have been maintained for 70 years in special genetic lines of laboratory mice. This shows that the selection pressure from hosts on parasites is very strong, he adds. The worms in question are Helegmosomoides baccari, a parasite of the house mouse, which is a model organism for many laboratory studies, and Helegmosomoides polygerus, a parasite of the wood mouse. Scientists examined their genomes and noticed that they showed levels of divergence that no one had previously suspected. They result mainly from the properties of proteins that interact with the host's immune system. According to the researchers, this means that selective pressure exerted by the host's immune response played a key role in shaping the patterns of genetic diversity in the genomes of these parasites. But that's not all. Scientists were surprised to notice that within the H. baccari species, there were also some discrepancies at the genome level. This is an important discovery because, as a model species, this nematode is used for various studies in laboratories around the world, and any differences between individuals can potentially influence the results of experiments. In the case of this species, it mainly concerns experiments on the response of mammals to parasitic infections and testing of antiparasitic drugs and vaccines. If there are discrepancies in the sites of the genome targeted by vaccines, resistance is likely to develop quickly in nematodes. 
Understanding the patterns and levels of genetic diversity found in parasite populations will therefore be a key step in developing effective vaccines against nematodes, write the authors of the publication, which was published in the journal, Nature Communications. As Professor reminds Clock, research on nematode genomes is difficult for technical reasons which is why they are still relatively poorly known. However, the current project with the researchers' participation allows us to better understand how the interactions between parasites and hosts develop on a genetic basis.